Just like arterial plaque can build up, it can also retract. Today you're going to learn the necessary steps to get squeaky clean arteries. And no, lowering cholesterol has nothing to do with this. Hi, I'm Dorothy Adamiak, former board certified naturopathic doctor, author of five books and the creator of Using Proportions Blueprints. So you can finally get an A in health. If you were told that you can reverse plaque by avoiding cholesterol, you were misinformed. Arterial plaque does not dissolve when you eat a low-fat diet. So withhold your enthusiasm when you see cholesterol numbers going down. They don't mean your arterial plaque buildup is going away. Don't aim for lower cholesterol numbers in hopes of a healthier heart. High cholesterol and arterial plaque do not go together. But low cholesterol and malfunctioning body do, so know what you're doing. Low cholesterol is linked to depression, violence, anxiety, low testosterone, higher mortality from infections, higher mortality from cancer, and higher risk from strokes, among others. So don't try to force your cholesterol down hoping to reverse arterial plaque. You may actually be doing something different instead. Arterial plaque reversal can be achieved by following the steps explained in this video. But before you can do that, you need to stop new plaque formation first. If you don't know how to do it, please watch my previous video to get the details. Once you stop new plaque formation, you can now move on to plaque reversal. The process outlined in this video will help you remove the already existing adrenal plaque buildup. The first step in plaque reversal is activation of something called HDL reverse cholesterol transport. In plain language, it means this. First, HDL particles move towards the plaque, and once there, they absorb cholesterol stuck in the arteries. When HDL particle is loaded with plaque cholesterol, it can be transported out of the body. HDL reverse cholesterol transport is the most crucial step in the whole process. You can't remove arterial plaque unless this step gets a green light. But for HDL to devour cholesterol stuck in the arteries, it needs to be present in sufficient quantities. Only when there is sufficient amount of circulating HDL, this step can proceed. You heard that right. You must have high HDL to remove the plaque. So to remove the plaque buildup, your job is not to lower cholesterol, but to actually raise the number of HDL particles. How do you know whether your body has what it takes? How do you know whether you have sufficient HDL? Look at your blood work. There are two ratios you need to check. These ratios are called anti-atherogenic because they suggest that there is sufficient HDL to support plaque reversal. The first ratio involves LDL and HDL. You want to see this ratio lower than 2.3. The lower, the better. Low ratio not only means that your body isn't building a new plaque, but it also means it's ready to reverse the old one. If your LDL to HDL ratio is 2.3 or higher, your body is likely building a new plaque and you need to get this number down before you can see better blood flow. Higher ratio indicates faster arterial plaque buildup. That's why you don't want to see anything like 4 or 5. However, if you're on cholesterol-lowering medication, HDL-LDL ratio may not be useful. Even though medication can make cholesterol numbers look better, these improved numbers do not have the same positive effect on plaque reversal. So don't aim for good ratio. Aim for good ratio without suppressive medication or supplementation. The second ratio you want to check is triglycerides over HDL. This ratio should be 1.5 or lower. Ratio over 3 is pro-atherogenic. If your ratio is over 3, you need to lower your triglycerides before attempting to reverse your plaque. This can be achieved by improving the diet. Both ratios, LDR over HDL and triglycerides over HDL, can be improved with lifestyle changes, which I'm about to explain. Medication or cholesterol suppressing supplementation, as I said earlier, 
can alter the numbers, but these new numbers don't translate to the same anti-atherogenic effect. Now comes the lifestyle part. What I'm going to tell you next is not only to help you improve the ratios, but also to start and accelerate the process of arterial plaque reversal. You may want to pay attention to the details as they can make or break your progress. Exercise. To reverse arterial plaque buildup, you need to exercise, but not any type of exercise or activity can do the job equally well. For example, neither walking nor marathon running is of much use. Walking is not vigorous enough to make any meaningful dent in the plaque and marathon running may actually can make plaque worse. Did you know that marathon runners have a much higher incidence of arterial plaque buildup than the general population? So what type of exercise is best to reverse the arterial plaque? Perk up your ears. There appears to be a linear relationship between exercise intensity and HDL levels which means the more vigorous the exercise, the bigger the boost to HDL. For example, if you want higher HDL, you don't want to walk or jog, you want to sprint. You don't want to do regular squats, you want to do jump squats. You don't want to do slow gardening all day long, but have a fast one hour tennis match instead. You get the point. HDL needs physical vigor. Vigorous activity not only excels in boosting HDL numbers, but also appears to make HDL flock to the side of the plaque in larger quantities. That's good. That's exactly what you want. The more HDL gets in, the more plaque is going to be removed. Weight training can also boost HDL, but again, not just any random dumbbell routine. The best effects are achieved with lighter weights and more repetitions. Heavier weights and shorter sets are less effective. To give you an example, 20 reps with 20 pounds is far better for the arteries than 10 reps with 30 pounds. Weight loss. And again, just as it is with exercise, not any weight loss can remove the arterial plaque. So don't bother going low fat. You're going to be much better off with low carb instead. Actually, no. You'll be better off going very low carb for that, you need to keep your carbohydrates below 10% of your total calories. Very low carbohydrate diets boost HDL numbers and activity far better than low fat diets. They are also superior in improving anti-atherogenic ratios I talked about before. Very low carbohydrate diets are also good for reducing visceral fat, the inflammatory type of fat that promotes plaque formation. Very low carbohydrate diets also depress leptin levels. Leptin, the energy balance hormone, is pro-atherogenic. Once you clean up your diet from carbohydrates and processed food, and combine it with vigorous exercise schedule, you should expect new plaque to stop forming and old plaque to start dissolving. Check your cholesterol ratios to track your progress. Low carb diet and vigorous exercise is the base, but if you want to speed up the process, you can do a few additional things. Quit smoking. Smoking reduces HDL, hence it makes the first step, reverse cholesterol transport, difficult. If you need to replace smoking with another relaxing habit, I have an idea. Get some wine. A glass of red wine, a glass, not a bottle. Not only raises HDL, it also prevents LDL oxidation, which naturally happens after a meal. You may recall from part one that LDL oxidation is the first step in arterial plaque formation. Without this step, arterial plaque does not form. So a glass of red wine can be highly effective in blocking this pro-atherogenic step. If you aren't into alcohol, don't despair. Wine is not the only food that raises HDL. Avocados and yogurt can do the job as well. Intense exercise combined with low carb is the ticket to activate the first step in plaque removal, but it doesn't cover everything. Reverse HDL cholesterol transport needs to be followed by cholesterol disposal and two other steps in order to bring the arteries back to their healthy state. So let's talk about step number two, cholesterol disposal. Once HDL picks up cholesterol from the plaque, it needs to be removed from the body. 
Removal of cholesterol is rather straightforward, but for that, it's good to have a functioning gold bladder. Cholesterol that needs to be disposed of first goes to the liver to form bile. From there, it gets collected in the gallbladder. After a fatty meal, the gallbladder releases the bile into the intestines. Once in the intestines, the bile mixes up with food and is evacuated during your next trip to the bathroom. So to properly dispose of cholesterol, you need to eat fat and have a well-functioning gallbladder that can dump bile into the gut. Low-fat diets don't promote bile flow because it's fat that makes gallbladder work. Low-fat, high-carbohydrate diets are a frequent cause of gallbladder malfunction. These diets have been shown to lead to bile stagnation and formation of stones. That's one of the reasons why low-fat, high-carbohydrate diets don't help with dissolving arterial plaque. Just in case you need an extra prompt to let go of low-fat fat, here is a study snippet to calm your fears down. High-fat diets don't promote arterial plaque buildup. If you're curious about fat details, please click through to part one. There is one more trick you can use to speed up bile disposal. Use soluble fiber. Soluble fiber, not just any fiber, but soluble fiber, present in many plants, can attach itself to cholesterol in the intestines. Soluble fiber can prevent cholesterol reabsorption back into the body. Among the plants that have high soluble fiber content are Brussels sprouts, avocados, turnips, pears, carrots, and apples. Let's move to plaque reversal step number three and four. After cholesterol is taken out of the plaque, the remnants of macrophages also need to be removed. You may recall from part one that macrophages come to participate in inflammation, but the rescue mission not always succeeds and many get stuck in the plaque during the process. Now, since macrophages no longer hold on to cholesterol, their remnants must be removed from the site as well. Otherwise, they would continue blocking the blood flow. Removal of macrophages is the first step in visibly shrinking the plaque size. Once the macrophages are gone and the arteries are clear of debris, the tissue can start remodeling. Bringing back elasticity to arteries is the final step in reversing plaque buildup. Here are a few lifestyle interventions that can improve microphage removal and tissue regeneration. Step number three and four require good nutrient reserves. Calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, vitamin K, D, A, and E, vitamin B12 and B complex must be present before arteries can return to health. But don't get tempted to take mega supplements. You must strive to get all the nutrients from the diet. This is the best way to ensure that you don't tip your nutrition needle towards the wrong direction. Let me give you an example. Calcium. You can increase your calcium either by eating calcium-rich foods or by taking supplements. You may think that if the amount of calcium is the same, your arteries won't notice the difference between the food and the pills. But that's not the case. Studies show that high calcium diet does not promote calcium formation but calcium from pills does. So diet and supplements can have very different effect on the body. To prevent disappointment, focus on high nutrient density foods and use supplements sparingly. The highest mineral density can be found in animal foods, especially in organs, such as liver. You may want to add a portion of beef liver to your weekly menu to ensure good nutrition. Liver has extremely high level of nutrients and can prevent many deficiencies. Make sure to get it frozen, as nutrient retention in frozen liver is much higher than in a fresh one. Macrophage removal and tissue regeneration can be significantly accelerated by intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting triggers body-wide regeneration, which includes blood vessel renewal. Intermittent fasting increases apoptosis and autophagy. These two work in tandem. Apoptosis destroys old and damaged cells and autophagy cleans necrotic debris from the site. Apoptosis and autophagy can be achieved with intermittent fasting. The process starts after 24 hours of fast and continues till 48 hour mark. After 48 hours, the effect is diminished. And here's the bummer. 
Insulin prevents autophagy. So if you eat high glycemic index foods and don't fast, you may be stuck with arterial blood buildup without a chance for recovery. Sunlight. Regeneration of arterial tissue requires steady blood flow. That can be achieved by keeping blood pressure steady and ensuring an adequate supply of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a vasodilator. It widens blood vessels and lowers blood pressure. It prevents tissue pacification and facilitates tissue regeneration. Nitric oxide is produced in the body and sunlight increases its production. Sunbathing is good for the heart. When the skin is exposed to ultraviolet light, it produces nitric oxide, which is then transferred from the skin to the circulation. You may suspect that your body has boosted nitric oxide production when your blood pressure drops after you bask in the sun. There are far more useful interventions for reversing arterial plug buildup. If you want to know more, please leave a comment. I may follow up with another clip on the topic if there is enough interest. I hope you liked the video and you're ready for part 3 where I'll be talking about fringe approaches to arterial plug reversal as well as to how to monitor your plug reversal progress. Please subscribe and see you soon.